Hey, <laughs> how the devil are ya? <laughs> right, so what have I got today? This is what I got. Now, Aima have very kindly sent me out this A07 amp to review. Thank you, Aima. Appreciate it. Also, oh, exciting. <laughs> Aima have offered to give away two of these amps. Ooh. So I'm going to run a little competition at the end of the video, and also I'll be showing you how to apply. So wait till the end of the video uh, so you can enter. How's that for really new in here? Make you wait till the end, you son of a... So here it is. <laughs> Let's open the box. Let's have a little look. Oh, there's always these sticky things. Now, I want to keep that quite intact. Oh, that's not too bad. Marvellous. Whoop. Bit of sponge on the top. Some Instructions. Power lead, power brick. Now, let's have a look. Now, I think it should be the 36 amp. Let me just have a look what it is. This says, now... Online it says 36 volt 5 amp. This is actually 36 volt 6 amp. So there you go. Now that should give the amp, or should give me 85 watts into 8 ohms, and I think it's 95 watts into 4 ohms. Now my speaker is a 6 watt, a 6 watts, 6 ohms. So I should be getting somewhere between there. <laughs> there we are. Here's the amp itself. How do I get it out? I get too excited. Oh, hello. Hey, yeah. Hey, this isn't bad, is it? I do like it. Very, seems very well made. Nicely made. Hmm. Okay. Let me have a quick uh, look around this. Have a little look, see what I think, and I'll get back to you in a sec. One second later. Okay, well, it was more than one second. I tell a lie. Okay, on the front, we've got the little toggle switch on off here. And then we've got uh, line in RCA. And there's your Bluetooth there. Now this is, I think the codex are uh, SBC, AAC, Aptex and Aptex HD. Now it's good to see these amps uh, put in Aptex or APTX or <laughs> into their amps. Uh, hopefully one day we may see some of these sort of budget yams, get in some LDAC in them, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Or even Aptex Adaptive, oh, wouldn't that be nice? Now, I gotta say, it's solidly built, and I do like this kind of, you see that on the light there? It's got like this wood grain effect on it on the top. I do like that, that's nice. Feels well made. Um, or oh, like solid metal, I think, aluminium or aluminum buttons on the front, knobs, I should say. Uh, and also what I like, they're not plastic, they're proper rubber on the bottom, not plastic. So that helps it to stop slipping back and forth when you're trying to plug things in or moving the wires or anything. It's not slipping all over the place. Sometimes the weight of the wires at the back, when you've got it on top, it, they, it pulls it back a little bit. And you've got to keep moving it forward when the rubber feet um, help sort of limit that. Anyway, that's enough of the feet. <laughs> Who cares about the feet? Yeah, uh, one thing which is a bit of a weirdo, there's no like, do you know when you turn the bass and treble up, there's always like a little notch in the centre there. I mean, it's got the markings, but it's always like a little notch there that, that clicks so you know. So if you're not looking at it directly, you just know if you had the lights off or something. I don't know why you'd have the lights off, but some people like to listen in the dim light. <laughs> it clicks there, but it doesn't. So you just got to really look at it you just got to look at it to see where it is in the centre. And there's the volume knob there. Okay, on the back. Okay, we've got... Okay, that's... Oh, so that goes on there. I'll screw that on in a second. You've got your line audio in, RCAs, left and right. And you've got your line out here. And that's if you want to connect it to another amp or a power amp. Or even a, a, powered, amp, a powered subwoofer. Can't go to a passive one, I don't think. And then you got your speaker binding posts. Now, if it's like all the others from China, they got teeny little holes in them. Teeny tiny little holes. <laughs> so you're going to need spades or banana plugs for these. Oh, there we go. 
I don't know if you can see that there. Oh, hang on, let me go let's get that. Oh, can I see that? Hang on, let me get this bit. I got a bit of a 12 gauge wire hanging about somewhere. Give me a sec. One second later. Okay, I'm back. Now, it's hard to see on this. I can't really see this. Yeah, right. So this is 12 gauge. So if you've got 12 or 14 gauge wire, that's never going to get through there. Not on a gajillion years. Just too fat. It just won't go through. It's not going to do it. It ain't going to, it ain't going to go in. Uh, 14 gauge, I think you struggle with. I think that's pr pretty much 16 gauge or below. You, otherwise, you're buggered. <laughs> Anyway, so let's get this connected up. I'm gonna try that line out and see if I can connect it to my Yamaha amplifier, even though that's still 85 watts. I'd still like to see if it works or not. Uh, and then we'll have a try and listen to it and see what it sounds. Oh, before I listen to it, I do wanna have a little look on the inside because it's got changeable op amps in there. So I'm gonna have a little peek inside and I think it's just these four screws at the back here. Now the tiny little Allen key there they are. You see that should just go in. So I think it's that one. I'm not sure if I have to remove these as well uh, but I'll let you know if I do. So I'm just going to take these four out for now and see what happens. Okay the lid is off. Uh, now it turns out I only had to remove the two top ones at the back here. That one and that one there. The two top ones at the front and they just sort of slid off and come out then. So there you go. And that's the inside of it. Ta -da! <laughs> okay, so what have we got in it? Well, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it operates on a TAP3255 chip uh, with a QCC304X uh, Qualcomm chip, which is there. Okay, that's for the Bluetooth. And you've got these one, two, three, four, five removable, replaceable. Op amps, the NE5532s. So what about that? I don't know how easy they are to remove. I don't know. <laughs> Shall I remove one? Shall I have a look? I don't know, I might work it out in a minute. Okay, and you can see, there it is. Nice big chunky cap at the back there. Bit of a heat sink. And there you go. Have a good look. Do, 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 do. Okay, <laughs> so. I took one out, there it is, <laughs> all right. Now make sure you put it in the right way. I th I'm pretty sure that's the right way. We'll soon find out if I've broken it when we go to test it, but I just wanted to take it out to see how easy it was. Now, it was pretty easy. I used a very gently sort of eased it out with a one of these type of players, the pointy nose players. Now, I have to say that you have to be really careful with these pins. <laughs> it, quite soft metal uh, and they bend easily so I when I took it out I did bend one now I've hoped when I've put it right in the right place again and now let's have a look to see if I can get it back in <laughs> okay Hopefully that's make sure I just check both sides. I should slot back in now. There you go. Phew! <laughs> it's in. <sighs> okay, uh, I haven't got it fully set up. I have been testing it, giving it a bit of a a bit of a good going over listening to it. But before that, I thought this was pretty cool. So I thought I'd show you the line out. So I'm using the three and a half mil line out to a Y splitter into RCAs. Uh, so it's going from line out from here into my Yamaha AS500. And I put it in the CD uh, input via RCA in the back of there. So that I'm now using this as a preamp and it's set. In, so I've basically turned my AS500 into a Bluetooth receiver. <laughs> Just to show you, I've got, a, I've got the Bluetooth already connected, okay. Let me just double check, I've got everything all set up right. And if I play this now, it should come through this. And to prove it's coming through, hang on, let me, might not be able to hear that.
Okay, and to prove that it's coming through my Yamaha, look, the volume doesn't work on this amp. So you can't, once you've got that line out in and using it as a preamp, I'll just turn that down, the volume does nothing on here. And I don't think the tone controls do anything either. Let me just double check they don't. Nah, nothing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> anyway. Okay, if you're using it um, for, let me just turn that down. If you're using it uh, to, connect, to connect to a sub, an active subwoofer, powered sub, I think how it works is, is this volume won't control, it'll control the music coming out of the speakers, but it won't control the sub's volume. So if you turn the volume up on this, you will have to turn the volume up on your subwoofer to match uh, as you play the music louder or quieter. So that's a bit of a pain. It would be good if it's a bit of a variable if, it, if that turned the volume of the sub up and down, but it doesn't. But here we are, that's one caveat it's got. But it does connect to a subwoofer and you've got to turn up both. There we are. Anyway, how does it sound? Well, I tell you what, this wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't do a sound test. I not only just do a sound test, compare it to another amp. Well, I've compared this to my Yamaha AS500. Now, I love my AS500. I prefer this over the newer one, the AS501. And I prefer it just a little bit over the Marantz PM6007. <laughs> so let's see if this little AIMA A07 Pro can keep up with it. Have a listen to this.
think of that? Mmm, pretty close, wasn't it? Mmm, <laughs> not bad at all, is the lamp. Now, I recorded this directly from the CD player via RCA into this one and via RCA into this one, into the AS500. Um, so using the onboard DAC in the compact disc player, the Yamaha um, CD300. And I thought this performed very well. It's very clear. Uh, tonally, it's very good. Uh, I, I don't seem to hear any roll off on the top end. It's not too harsh like some class D amps can be. Doesn't sound too sort of, tss, 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 tss. I didn't get that at all. Um, I thought the bass was pretty good. Some people have said, well, the bass isn't as good as some of the other amps. Um, some of the other Chinese amps, but I thought the bass was well. It worked well with my Dali Oberon 5s. No problem at all. I mean, if you do have smaller speakers, you can always use the tone controls. You can't defeat the tone controls, so you may as well use them. If you haven't got enough bass, then turn it up. If, if I had to make a, a slight complaint about it, I thought the bass was a bit... Uh, I thought the Yamaha handled the bass a little bit better. It was more boom. Well, that was more boom. Okay, is it, it's shot the bass. I can't, it's hard for me to explain, but I thought the bass was a bit thumpy. Here we are, thumpy, that's the word. Okay, but not too much. Look, you know, um, I thought it was a great little amp. These Chinese amps, uh, they've, they've come a long way over the last few years. I've, had, uh, I've done the Fozzy TB10D, that was good. Uh, the B50, the Riddick B50, was quite impressed with that. And this one, you know, I think this is going for about 100 quid. And I think if I had to compare it to the Fozzy TB10D, uh, the TB10D TB <laughs> did have maybe a tad more bass, but I think tonally, this is more accurate. Uh, it was a clearer sound to it. Uh, but don't forget, I think the Fozzy is only about 50 or 60 quid, it's, 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 you know, if you go on AliExpress. Uh, I think this was a little bit better in the mids and the upper, upper, upper ranges. So a good little amp. Not bad at all, and I think this is going for about 100, 120 quid, around there, you get it. I think there's a discount code on Amazon at the moment, so you can dive in and get that. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you. No, <laughs> I haven't forgot the competition. <laughs> right, so Aima have kindly offered to give two away to two lucky winners. And I thought about how I can do this without you guys getting scammed, okay? Because there's a lot of scammers down around about. So, first things first, you've got to like this video. And make sure you're subscribed, okay? Otherwise, you can't win one of these amps. There's two going. And then you comment down below, deal me in, okay? Nothing else. Don't try and enter twice because I've got uh, a link on my computer which I'm gonna put in random comment checker and it'll delete any doubles. So if you try and enter twice, <laughs> okay. Now here's the thing, okay. Well, I'll just repeat it. So you gotta like and subscribe. Then you gotta comment below, deal me in. Okay. And then I'll put you into a random comment checker to pick two winners. Now here's the thing, I will not reply to your comment because sometimes when you do a giveaway on YouTube you get some scammer who will pinch my icon on my picture and then say they're me and say oh email me here and send me your bank details give me your credit card details the three digits on the back and I'll send you the amp it's not me okay I will not reply to your comments I may heart them that's about it but I will not reply do not reply to anybody Who's, who's replied to you, okay, on the comments. I will not do that. I will be announcing the winners on Friday the 30th of June, okay? So look up for that video and I'll be announcing the two winners on there. Then, then what I'll do, I'll give you my email address. You can then contact me and I'll give you the details of how to get the amps free of charge. Anyway, that's come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoy entering the little competition have a bit of a dabble, you never know. People say there's no point, I never win. You never know. I'm putting it in a random comment check. It could be anybody, okay? Uh, so have a go. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.